Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's presentation on healthy at home habits brought to you by the Center for Work and Family Life, Health and Wellbeing Program, Recreational Sports, Occupational Therapy, Environmental Health and Safety, Health Plans, and Dining Hospitality. We are so excited to have you here with us today so we can share expert tips and resources on ways to promote health and well being among our Trojan community. What a great turnout today. I wanted to take a few minutes to introduce myself. I'm Julie Chabdi, Health and Wellbeing Program Manager with the Center for Work and Family Life. I am new to USC, started about three months ago, and previously worked at UC Riverside for 12 years as the Faculty and Staff Wellness Program Manager and Co-Chair of UCR Healthy Campus. I've also held several leadership roles with the UC system for their Healthy Campus Network and the lead for the smoke and tobacco free policy. Now I'm excited to be part of the USC Trojan community and to be here today with this wonderful team of colleagues, which I will introduce shortly. A few housekeeping items. We would like to invite you all to stand if you're able to and stretch any time during today's presentation. So feel free to get up, move around and shake it out. Please mute your audio to minimize any background noise until we open it up for Q&A at the very end. Feel free to use the chat function to make comments or to ask questions and our presenters will assist in responding. This webinar is being recorded and will be archived for sharing. On March 16th, 2020, one year from today, our country and really our world shut down. Restaurants, gyms, schools, and places of work closed as we were asked to shelter at home from the coronavirus. In an instant, our lives changed. We found ourselves working, learning, living, and socializing at home at a distance from our usual connections and surroundings. One year later today, we are still in the midst of this pandemic, but there is light at the end of the tunnel. During this time and during the upcoming recovery phase, it's especially critical that we maintain and support our own mental, physical, and social health and well being, as well as those of our colleagues and peers. We can integrate well being concepts into work and learning environments and create healthy practices that lead to success. Our team is here to show you how. Today, we have a packed agenda which includes an hour jam packed with information on healthy at home habits, the neuroscience of human connection, preparing healthy meals at home, fitting in movement at home, home ergonomics, health plan resources, and then Q&A at the very end. Now, I'm honored to introduce our team of presenters for today. We have Alice Chen, Assistant Director of Health Plans, Dr. Marissa Marchioni, Assistant Professor of Clinical Occupational Therapy. Mike Munson, Associate Director of Recreational Sports. Lindsay Pine, Registered Dietitian, Dining and Hospitality. And Dr. Cynthia Ryan, Program Manager for the Center for Work and Family Life. I also like to introduce Suzanne Hyun, who is the Health and Wellbeing Program Coordinator and thank her for all her logistical support and coordination. I will now kick off our presentation focusing on healthy habits at home. And I hope you will find a few useful tips, things that you can start doing, or maybe just reinforcing things that you may already be doing. So most of us have been working remotely or partially remote for a year now. Some of us may have found a routine and enjoying the flexibility, the quiet and the no commute and additional time with others. Others struggle with balancing work and family life, trying to work amidst a chaotic environment or miss their commute, which was their only way of having some alone time. So here are a few strategies to help you navigate working at home in a healthy and productive way. The first thing is to get up and get dressed for the day. Find a routine that you can stick with that will transition your body from sleeping and resting to actually being productive and working. And this could mean 
eating breakfast first thing in the morning, starting your day off with something healthy, working out, reading the news, taking a shower and even putting on makeup, just anything to signal your body that it's time for work. Scheduling your day is really important. Think about when is it you're going to start work and when will you end so that you have that boundary between work life and family life. Also, schedule your lunch break. We want to make sure that you are taking the time to mindfully eat a healthy lunch. And then make time for breaks as needed. Breaks so you can go outside, get some sun, do some movement, and then make sure that you schedule your day in terms of your meetings, schedule time to return calls, time to even plan, and then after all of our meetings back to back, Schedule time for follow-up items and action items. Discuss any non-traditional hours with your supervisor. If you are taking care of children, elderly parents, uh, pets, family members, maybe there are some ways that you can work early shifts, evening shifts, as long as the work gets done and there is an agreement on a flexible schedule. And then minimize distractions. Map out a quiet space to work and look for ways to alternate between home and work responsibilities with someone you might be living with. Maybe you're sharing an office and you can take turns using the office or maybe one person has a conference call while another person does something that's quiet and vice versa. And a note on email culture. Working remotely and flexibly right now allows work to be done at any time during non-traditional work hours or days and times. A way to be mindful of work-life balance is by labeling your emails sent outside of non-traditional work hours with an expected response time like for tomorrow or for today so employees don't feel that they need to step away from personal time to respond. For many of us, remote work has provided some positives but also some challenges. We are finding ourselves in more and more virtual meetings and calls than ever. There's no more time traveling across campus, informal chats in the office, meetings are back to back to back, often where you are encouraged to be present, to have your video on, to be staring at the screen. So here are some tips to prevent meeting and Zoom fatigue and promote healthy and productive meetings. Consider when scheduling meetings to schedule them for 50 minutes, to allow 10 minutes to transition, to take a break, to grab something to eat. If possible, avoid scheduling meetings late Fridays to allow time to catch up on the week and to prepare for the following week. And if possible, avoid meetings early on Monday mornings to allow time for yourself and your team members to warm up to work. And then be mindful of scheduling meetings during lunch and after hours. Prior to the meeting, establish expectations. Let your participants know is the video camera optional so that they can have a visual break? Or are you expected to be on camera so that participants know that they should be camera ready? If there are meetings scheduled that are longer than usual or may run into lunchtime, let participants know to bring water so they have it handy and also a healthy snack. During the meeting, think of ways to make participants feel connected and included, especially with Zoom right now. It's very different from being in person. So maybe think of ways to start a meeting with something fun, like questions or icebreakers, or even some quiet time at the beginning of meetings to relax. Incorporating stretch breaks throughout your meetings, especially those over one hour, is a great way to keep the energy up. And then create a safe and welcoming environment where participants can contribute. So look for different ways people can give input, whether it be through the chat function, through raising the hand, maybe a polling option, and always check in with your meeting participants to make sure that they've had a chance to speak, since some may be shy on Zoom, and then make sure everyone identifies themselves so that we all know who each other are, which is really important for new employees as well. So just some quick tips for you to consider as you're organizing meetings or participating in meetings. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to our next presenter, Dr. Cynthia Ryan from the Center for Work and Family Life. She specializes in consultations, coaching, wellness, and keeping our work and family relationships healthy. 
to Dr. Ryan. Thank Adding it over you to so you. so much, Julie. Such an honor to be here. And so for these next few moments, I want to honor this moment that we have made it here so far. And it's been one year later. And while Julie is highlighting so many new healthy habits that we are bringing into our lives, things that we're adding to how we work and how we relate every day. So we've adapted and we have made it through transitions and we have learned a lot about how we want to keep our social life really healthy and well. And that's one of the biggest changes is how we've managed to stay social um, on many levels. So on the one hand, we may have been missing how things used to be when we socialized at the same time, we have become creative and we've become innovative and we have become more resilient and strong. And as a community, we have pulled together to create this. I think the more we heard socially distant, the more we wanted to be closer together socially. So we've really diversified how, how we can do that. And in the midst of that, what we are finding is that we have very normal, natural, appropriate needs for how we stay connected that is really essential to our health and well-being. And so learning what you discover about yourself that is important that nurtures you socially, emotionally, what is really at the heart of what you love to experience with family and friends and work life. And so knowing what you need is a very, very important way. It's normal to miss how things were, that it's, yes, a big change. And we have been compensating and learning. And in that, that is a very healthy growth function for our emotional and cognitive well being. It's natural to feel fatigue. The more we have created some complexity and ways of balancing, yes, it takes more energy. So essentially, the self-care is just so important. So knowing what you need for self-care to keep replenished because we are continuing. This is our ongoing way of life now in adapting to changes that we are experiencing. And then, you know, feel your needs are, are essential. They're not indicative. They're sort of like our emotional messaging. It's telling us what's important to kind of keep and sustain our strength and in our endurance and where we go. So keeping that in perspective that, oh, okay, I need this. That must be telling me something important to continue and learn and grow from. So while we're finding this, I think underneath it, we're going to see the source of really how you care for yourself and how and what you want to bring forward in your social realm. That we want to keep, you know, utmost compassion for ourselves. We want to have great empathy. We've all lived and been through these times. We have learned patience with one another. We all have a new language for things like, oh, I'm sorry, you're muted. And, and we know how to sort of treat that with grace and humor. And as was said, finding fun in our human nature, in our ways in which we just are living and adapting to these times. So I would say in this complexity, one of the keys is how we simplify. Sometimes as high achievers, we put those expectations out there and then we are striving so much. Maybe there's a time when we can simplify. Cognitively and emotionally, we can focus, we can center, maybe do one thing at a time. Oftentimes being realistic is productive and it is a way we do this. So finding our pace, knowing how we kind of navigate. It's like the ocean. Sometimes we're going to ride a wave and sometimes we're going to really crest the wave. There may be ways in which we just actually 
go with different motions of what happens. So plan for them. I always say to managers, supervisors, employees, plan for the gentle interruption. Plan for that wonderful moment when you get to see children and pets and have that moment of connection. That's really sometimes the opportunity that we have to keep our social world healthy and well. Um, we need to know what we absolutely need. So if it starts the day with, I know I really need to get this done, let yourself prioritize it. Let yourself have what you need to know you are fulfilled and accomplishing what is healthy for you. And, you know, ultimately we're going to encourage the positive connection comes from a positive outlook. How do we stay optimistic? We may have to look at all that's out there and realize, wow, you know, this I got done and it was really a good and healthy and positive experience. So notice within, oftentimes because we're achieving a lot, we're highly productive, we want to get things done, we can have a lot of internal self-dialogue that we may want to know is positive, encouraging, supportive, and manage those moments when we can sort of build on the most positive messaging from within. So ultimately we want to maximize how do we stay connected in the best way possible. So next I want to kind of move into, well, okay, how do we do that? And, you know, this is where I'm really encouraging you that, you know, while we've had to pivot, that's been our new frame of reference, we can create pivotal moments. And a pivotal moment might be noticing, wow, I just really want to pay attention. Pay attention to this person, this conversation, this message, this idea. This is where we can really create our own pivotal moment that not only is there, but nourishes ourselves. So that's a really um, essential piece of this. So what would that take? Well, what we know is from neuroscience is we need to look at one another when we connect, that we are a very complex blend of neurons and synaptic events and, and we have mirror neurons. And when we look at one another, we are connecting, we are seeing each other. And it's a very essential part. Now, sometimes we may miss in person, but we can do so even through our Zoom and we can look at one another and connect on that level. Secondly is sharing. You know, I've heard this for many years throughout communication trainings. It's so what we say, it's how we say it. So many times the tone, the voice, the gentle nature, it communicates to our, our whole mind, to, to ourself that we have a kind and caring and safe person there. It's, it's the friend of your amygdala who says, oh, this is a friendly voice. I'm really happy to hear it. And so we grow that experience through the tone and the, the way in which we create that sense of comfort and safety. So say what is thoughtful, say something that you know, we think about all the time, something we like about someone or appreciate about someone, we may have to remind them and say it and create that connection socially that we do uh, appreciate who we are. Asking, much of the time what I've learned is we can quickly assume we know and we offer, and yet taking a moment to ask and to say, help me understand, you know, when we're in group trainings, I often recommend, you know, when in doubt, find out, ask, how did you do that? Tell me what was so interesting about that. Um, find out more that helps you appreciate the person. Um, and throughout that value, is the compassion, is the optimism, is the gratitude. These are part of our core replenishments that I think holding to yourself. They say if you have compassion and it doesn't include yourself, uh, it's incomplete. So always begin 
with, with you? How are you connecting uh, with that? Varying the ways we relate. I think this is what has been so amazing about our time together is that um, we are creative and we're innovative and novelty really does express um, and grow our brain. If we learn something new, we pay attention to it and we see it and it's exciting to learn that. So it helps our brain elasticity, you know, creating connection and conversation and reaching out. So um, I think I'll pass it along. I have a few th thoughts just to share that, you know, when we're doing our sleep, our exercise, our positive thoughts, our healthy foods, we're really growing our healthiest self to make ourselves the most comforting and relating and happy people uh, to, to, to share and talk with. So thanks so much. Great, thank you. And Lindsay, registered dietitian with USC Campus Dining. Hi everyone, uh, thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Um, so let's, let's dive right in here. Um, I want to start off, oh, sorry. Yeah, you're on the right slide. <laughs> um, I want to start off by saying that I believe 100% in striving for balance in life, especially in what we eat. And I want to strongly discourage you from thinking that you need to try that new trendy fad diet. You don't. Yo-yo <laughs> dieting can actually harm your body more than help it. And most dieters actually regain the weight they lost plus more. So eating healthfully isn't about restriction. Uh, so let's talk about what to include in your diet instead of what to take away. Next slide, please. All right, so this is, this is so easy. It's my favorite way to eat. Um, I feel like the idea of healthy eating gets so overcomplicated and it just doesn't need to be. Um, so basically this is called the balanced plate method. You make half your plate veggies, a quarter protein, a quarter starch or grain. That's it. Next slide, please. Um, so then we can take that healthy balanced plate up a notch by making sure to add fruits, heart healthy fats. Also, we don't wanna forget those calcium rich foods. And uh, there are many sources of, of calcium in non-dairy foods. So if you don't eat dairy, um, no problem. Also, we wanna incorporate prebiotic and probiotic foods to help maintain a healthy gut. So prebiotics are fibrous foods that feed that good bacteria in our gut, that good bacteria in our gut, also called probiotics. Um, and just a fun fact, most of our immunity actually resides in the gut. So it's really important to keep our guts healthy. Next slide. All right, so um, let's talk about ingredients. Foods can help your mood, your energy levels throughout the day, uh, in addition to helping to lose weight and maintain weight and more importantly, also to prevent disease. So first and foremost, I really want you to focus on veggies and fruits. Try to get as much variety as possible by eating as many colors throughout the week of different fruits and veggies. They're anti-inflammatory, full of fiber, vitamins, nutrients, um, and fiber is heart healthy, gut healthy, cancer preventing, AIDS and weight loss. It's, it's a pretty amazing thing. Um, and with fruits and veggies, frozen is just as nutritious as fresh. A couple of my favorites are frozen berries to add into smoothies. I also really like frozen spinach, which you can sneak into pasta sauce. And number two, carbs. Such a, uh, such a popular topic to uh, discuss. They are not the devil, okay? Carbs are not the devil. And research time and time again shows us how healthy whole grains are. Things like brown rice, quinoa, oats, whole wheat pasta, farro, sweet potatoes, winter squash. Um, these items are packed with B vitamins, fiber, iron, and so much more. You don't need to avoid carbs, but just choose the smart ones more often. Uh, three, if you do eat animal protein, um, opt for lean uh, options. So uh, for example, um, I wanted to spell a myth here about poultry. A lot of people think that dark meat is worse than white meat, but it's actually a budget-friendly choice and higher in iron than white meat. A little bit higher in calories, but not a huge amount. So whether you choose white or dark meat, just be sure to make uh, to remove the skin before eating. That's where more of your unhealthier fats reside. Uh, number four, don't forget about that plant-based protein. They're often 
very good sources of fiber and extremely budget friendly. So items like beans, lentils, chickpeas, tofu, tempeh, uh, frozen edam edamame is one of my favorites um, and unsweetened soy milk. Number five, focus on those heart healthy unsaturated fats from plants, uh, which are important for our cell membranes, hormone regulation, and they keep us feeling satisfied. Definitely my favorite is olive oil. Also those omega-3 fats, the recommendation is to eat seafood twice a week. Um, you know, that can get a little bit pricey, but canned seafood is a great budget-friendly option. I love using canned salmon in, uh, to make salmon cakes, salmon salads, um, but canned tuna, sardines are also great omega-3 options as well. Um, and now plant foods, of course, like walnuts and flax also have omega-3s, very healthy ingredients, um, but they don't easily convert in our bodies um, and aren't the kind of omega-3s that help us with mood and depression. So if you are vegan and you don't eat fish, you may wanna talk to your healthcare practitioner about possibly um, taking an allergy supplement. Number six, uh, herbs and spices are very potent cancer preventing ingredients. Um, very high amount of antioxidants. And you can use a variety of fresh and dried. A couple of my favorites um, would be turmeric combined with black pepper. The black pepper makes it more potent. Um, and uh, those are ingredients that you might find in golden milk. Um, also, when you're marinating meats that you're going to grill, add herbs in there like rosemary because they'll actually help to block the carcinogens that are produced by grilling the meat. And of course, finally, we need something sweet in the arsenal. And dark chocolate in moderation is actually heart healthy due to those antioxidants called flavanols. I always keep dark chocolate chips in the freezer. Um, I'll do like an 85% cacao and just grab a small handful when I'm in the mood for something sweet. Next slide, please. So here I've listed some of my favorite flavoring agents to keep in the kitchen. This is definitely key to cooking dishes that you want to eat. Um, for example, you may have chicken in the kitchen, but if you don't have anything to actually make it taste good, chances are you'll probably end up ordering pizza, which, you know, not necessarily a bad thing, but we want to try and uh, cook for ourselves as much as possible. Next slide, please. So I love meal planning and meal prepping. Um, they are great ways to save time and money. And the great thing is there's no one way to do these things. It could look like making an extra serving of the dinner you plan to make tonight, or maybe you wanna make a soup or a casserole, put it in the freezer for a later time when you don't feel like cooking. So meal planning is simply figuring out what you want to make for the week. Take that a step further and you have meal prepping where you cook multiple days worth of meals all in one day and then you put everything in individual containers. This is a great method for portion control because you pre-portioned everything in advance. Um, now, I personally often use a style called buffet meal prepping, which may be a new term for you. Instead of making individual servings of specific dishes, you instead make big batches of staples that you can mix and match throughout the week. So that could look like making a big batch of beans, lentils, maybe a whole grain like quinoa, maybe a protein like grilled chicken and roasted salmon. Then it's so easy to throw together a healthy meal if you already have some of those main elements prepared. All right, so snacks, love snacks. Um, and when coming up with smart snacks, I look for them to contain a combination of protein, fiber, and fat to keep you satiated. I also try to mix uh, multiple textures in there like crunchy, creamy, chewy. That picture on the top right is some chocolate peanut butter yogurt I made that has plain Greek yogurt, natural style peanut butter, unsweetened cocoa powder, just a touch of maple syrup in there too. Um, an important tip about peanut butter is to buy brands with only one ingredient, peanuts obviously, um, but many peanut butter brands contain a lot of added sugar and salt. So look for that. Um, same goes for nut butters too, like almond butter. So be sure to check out the nutrition page on the USC Hospitality website. There are so many Nutrition articles on there written by myself and our dietetic interns, including that balanced plate handout that I had showed you earlier. Next slide. And also, if you have a general question, feel free to email me. At the bottom of the page on that website, you'll see there's an Ask the Dietitian button. 
and your email will be confidential and go straight to me. So um, thank you so much. Wonderful, thank you, Lindsay. And now I'd like to introduce Mike Munson, Recreational Sports. Good afternoon, everybody. Appreciate the opportunity to share some of our programs uh, from Recreational Sports, uh, mostly rebranded under the term USC Stay Active. Um, I think the first takeaway that I'll give everybody during the presentation is remember a long time ago when humans used to fly on airplanes and the flight attendant would come on and say, if the oxygen mask comes down, please take care of yourself before you take care of others. My main takeaway is please make yourself a priority. Um, so some of these tips I think will help you uh, to stay active. Um, putting things onto your schedule, getting up and walking, using a step tracker, uh, different types of break workouts that you can do, uh, mini sessions. Um, we have a bunch of online live classes that you can take. We also have um, YouTube channels where you can utilize some of our quick stretching and quick little workouts that you can use that five minute break in your meetings uh, when you're working with your uh, different units and your different uh, uh, folks that you're on Zoom with. Um, there's different types of mindful movement, whether it's yoga or Pilates that we do. The other takeaway for you throughout this is find a workout buddy. If you can help hold each other accountable and give yourself um, the different types of credit for showing up and working out together, you're more apt to do these types of things. Um, I used to have some really good friends that we worked out and did racquetball every day in person. During COVID, we were not able to do that. So I've met a whole bunch of new people online to be able to do online soul line dancing. So find what's what works for you and make those connections and hold each other accountable. Um, you know, it's, it's about having fun. Find the exercise that you enjoy. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different classes that we'll go through in the next uh, slide. There's also a whole bunch of videos. We're offering three workout classes uh, throughout the semester. Um, there's there's uh, hit classes, which are a little bit uh, faster paced, high mobility, um, high intensity. Um, there's mobility classes, Pilates, yoga. Uh, there's a bunch of different uh, types of dance classes. Anything to get moving uh, and to work the body and stretch, I think is very important. We also offer a virtual personal trainer. Uh, so can't do it in person right now. Hopefully soon we'll be able to. Uh, but they, they, through Zoom, can do home workouts with you, body movement workouts. You don't have to have equipment. Uh, we can modify equipment for you. So that's an option. The other thing that we're offering is a free 10-minute uh, fitness consulting with one of our fitness coordinators, full-time professionals. And they can kind of game plan for you, tell you what's available, what you might do on your own, some different resources, whether it's through Rec Sports or out on the internet. Um, we also have virtual uh, private Pilates classes. So there's things that we have shifted and changed now that we're online in COVID. Um, we still feel that the online virtual classes will still continue after we're back full time for the convenience factor, uh, less of a commute. You might be able to have your workout buddy continue to be able to work with you online versus coming into one of the fitness centers to be able to do the in-person classes. Next slide, please. There's kind of a, a look of the, uh, the overview of the classes that we're offering in the spring for free. Uh, so like I said, different types of uh, Pilates, uh, yoga, uh, hit classes, and dance classes. Next slide. And we talked a little bit before about our personal training. Uh, private Pilates, um, kind of that check-in with a, uh, a trainer for the, the, the info sessions, kind of that 10-minute checkup. And the next one. Again, these are some of the, the packages uh, that we're, we're offering for that more individual 
uh, one on one um, type of uh, a personal training. And then I know this is mainly talking about our online, but soon, very soon, uh, we will be opening up some outside fitness uh, areas on campus uh, to be doing some types of approved safety uh, types of activities. And then keep our fingers crossed, we should be opening up our uh, fitness centers. We have three fitness centers across, two on the main campus and one over in health science campus. Uh, and those are some of the different types of activities that we're offering once we get back to in-person. And the memberships uh, for faculty and staff are as low as $25 a month. Um, and then group fitness for $15 a month. And remember that those fees can be offset by the university's uh, health uh, incentive program. So you could be being a member of the Lions Center, the uh, one of the other fitness centers and get it all reimbursed. Slide please view it. And then we have a whole bunch of different things happening. Things are gonna move fast. Uh, different types of changes. So please follow us on any types of the social media. Uh, and there's an email down below if you have other questions. And I can answer questions in the, the chat a little bit and we can try to follow up at the very end. Great, now, thank you. Throw, throw it over to our colleague over in occupational therapy, Marissa. Thank you so much, Mike. Um, and after talking about all of those fun fitness things and opportunities there. I wanna encourage everyone to take a pause and check in with themselves as we begin talking about ergonomics and being comfortable while working from home. So I'm gonna encourage you all to check in with yourself, maybe move around a bit if you haven't done that yet. Maybe offer your body a quick stretch or a couple of wiggles. Maybe you stretch your neck because you've been looking at that screen or maybe a little bit, uh, you wanna round out those wrists because you've been mousing and typing. So whatever your body is calling you to do, I call you to respond to it. Now, uh, no matter what kind of work you do or no matter where you're working from, uh, you might be exposed to some of these ergonomic risk factors that I have here on this slide. Um, so the first of those ergonomic risk factors is force. Now, any one of these risk factors can contribute to discomfort while working. So that's why we want to avoid them if we can. So force is muscular effort. It's different throughout the whole body. You may not even think of typing or mousing as being forceful, but when you're talking about these smaller parts of your body, a little bit of force goes a long way. So if you notice that maybe you're very invested and enthusiastically typing up that response to um, an email or excitedly writing up that grant proposal or whatever else it is that you're uh, typing about, check in with the amount of force that you're utilizing to type and to mouse and try to relax your hands and your muscles throughout your body. The second of the ergonomic risk factors is awkward postures, which really means any time that any part of your body is out of a neutral alignment. That can happen in your spine, it can happen with your hands, it can even happen with your lower body, um, and really any joint out of, out of alignment, it functions within degrees, right? So if we're here and we're only a little bit out of alignment in our wrist, maybe that's not as severe as if we were very much out of alignment. And all of these risk factors really compound and work together. Now the third is repetition. And maybe this one's pretty clear already, but you not, may not think about this time you spend working as also being related to repetition. So the longer that we're working, maybe you're pulling in a nine or 10 hour day that day, we've been experiencing more repetition in our, our fingers, our hands, and even in our position. And the other thing to consider that maybe is a little less obvious with repetition is that if we do lots of similar movements, that also counts as repetition. So typing and mousing and maybe even using your cell phone all have a lot of very similar movements which can contribute to the amount of repetition in those activities. The next is contact stress. And really that's any time one of your soft tissues make contact 
with hard surfaces. Basically, if your tissues squish in that moment, uh, then you might have a little bit of contact stress. And I think we are most often experiencing this in working from home when um, sitting perhaps on a cushion or a lack of a cushion uh, where we have a little bit more uh, contact stress from for sitting for on maybe a kitchen chair or something along those lines. Or perhaps the surface that we're working on is not as smooth and uh, its edges as what we might have at work. And so that edge of that kitchen table might give you a little bit of contact stress. Now, the last of the risk factors is vibration. And really we most often see this when working with hand tools or heavy machinery. So if that's not your kind of work, uh, you may not think that you're exposed to it, but sometimes it happens even in computer-based work if we're typing or working on a bouncy or less stable surface. So all of these risk factors are things to check in on. Now we're moving in to a full body check. So if you are, happen to be wherever it is that you work uh, from home right now, I encourage you to, to check your workstation. And if not, keep in mind some of these joint angles and other keys uh, when you do return to wherever it is that you would be working from. So with this, we wanna start from the ground up. It's very difficult to have adequate stability if your feet aren't well supported, meaning we all do uncomfortable, uh, uncomfortable postural things to compensate for a lack of stability. So both feet should be able to be flat on the floor or some other supportive surface, like a footrest. Or if you don't have one of those, you might look for a stack of books or a box or something to set under your feet so you have stability. And then you might have to check, but you're gonna look at your ankles, your knees, and your hips check in with each of those joints and see if you've got about 90 degrees. A little bit more open is okay. And sometimes we wanna make a little bit more space because it feels good to have a stretch. So you don't have to stay perfectly in this position all day long, movement is good. Uh, but check to, to see that you have the stability at about 90 degrees at each of those lower extremity joints. And then step three, probably my favorite step, honestly, is check in with the postural stack of your spine. And what you might want to think about is your spine is a little bit like a string of pearls. And we want that nice string of pearls to be all lined up. And you might draw from the top of your head or the crown of your head and lift up through the crown just to see if you're nice and stacked. The part that everybody kind of forgets in that is the head. So make sure that you check in that your ears, shoulders, and hips are all stacked up. And then we move into the upper extremities. And if you're doing computer-based work, we want about uh, 90 to 110 degrees there at the elbow. So we don't wanna to be too close. I say, don't type like T-Rex. And then <laughs> uh, aside from that, we also wanna line up your hands. So if you draw that imaginary line right through the center of your middle finger down towards your elbow, we wanna make sure that that's lined up as well. Next slide. So what can we do at home? And really there's a lot of at-home solutions that don't require you running out to the store or ordering anything off of Amazon. Um, but I would say the, the thing that most people feel challenged by when working from home is working on a laptop. And it's really difficult to position yourself well with that stacked spine and that 90 degrees of openness at the elbow on a laptop. So that might be a time when we look for some external devices, either an external monitor or uh, uh, keyboard and mouse, just so that you can get your eyes up at the right height and your arms open. Of course, that's not the only joint that we want to check in on as we've uh, reviewed through my little quick check-in. Uh, I mentioned already that you might be able to elevate your feet or support your feet on books or boxes, keep that screen at eye line. And then if you've got contact stress, maybe add in a pillow, some folded blankets, but of course, if those tricks don't work, you might take it to the next step. Next slide. And request your ergonomic evaluation. So one of the wonderful things that is available to you is an ergonomic evaluation. We also have a survey that gives you targeted tips for how you might adjust your home working station to be more comfortable. It's pretty easy to find it. <laughs> it's the first thing that pops up if you Google USC ERGO for ergo. And you'll complete a survey, which will then generate tips and strategies for you. If that doesn't seem like you can quite fix it on your own, you have access to meeting with an occupational therapist one-on-one -on -one who will work with you on your individual station and help you figure out how do you work from home more comfortably. 
I also have included uh, contact information just in case the, you're having any difficulty finding us. I always think having more than one way to get there is a good solution. And I'll leave you with what we started with. Don't forget to stretch. Don't forget to check in with your body. Don't forget to take breaks and listen to your body and your mind as, as we've all been talking about today. Um, a little bit of time set aside for you that couple of minutes just to attend to your body can go a really long way. So I encourage you to respond to those signals that <laughs> your body is sending you. And now I will hand it off to one of our colleagues, Alice Chen, who is the Assistant Director at Health Plans. Thank you, Marissa. I'm already sitting a little bit <laughs> taller and working on my posture, so that was really helpful. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm going to spend some time to go over a high-level overview of some of the well-being resources and programs available to you through our health plans and your specific medical plan. Um, I want to note that we do have more detailed information and fact sheets on each of these items on the benefits employee site. And um, of course, we welcome you to contact our office anytime or HR service if you have questions beyond this presentation. So I'm going to start with the left column. Um, these are resources that are available to all benefit eligible employees, um, regardless of what medical plan you're enrolled in. Uh, the first one is a wellness incentive. You may have already heard about it through our open enrollment process. Um, employees can earn up to $480 off their annual medical premiums by completing two steps, um, an online questionnaire called a Vitality Health Review, and then an in-person screening called a Vitality Check through a lab or you're visiting your primary care physician. This year, we've partnered with a new vendor called Vitality. Um, this is a really robust and engaging website. We encourage you to visit it if you're um, interested in setting up some health goals. They have a lot of great resources there, coaching, articles. Um, it's really helpful after you fin finish your online questionnaire because that kind of gives you a baseline in your risks where you can get started. So if you have time, I um, encourage you to visit that. And then you can also sync up your fitness devices um, if you want to further track your performance goals or activities. Um, the second item is the fitness incentive. Um, continue on from last year, we're offering again $220 credit towards eligible fitness expenses related to activities and equipment. We have a detailed list on our WageWorks website that you can find um, out if they qualify. And then recently, given with the pandemic, we understand that a lot of gyms um, and activities have closed. So we did add a couple new things like fitness shoes and bicycles, and that's just to promote more outdoor activities for you guys. And then the third item is Gym Pass. Uh, we've partnered with this company to offer discounted memberships to gyms and fitness classes. Again, with the pandemic, that's kind of changed a little bit. So they've expanded to include now wellness apps and fitness classes all online. Um, you can definitely find more information in these fact sheets on Employee Gateway under Healthy Choices Incentives. And then I'm going to move over to the center column. These are resources and programs um, for members that are enrolled in the USC PPO, uh, the Trojan Care EPO, and EPO Plus. We have a um, Lyra, we have a resource with Lyra Mental Health. They provide um, wellness and emotional support uh, through technology. So you can meet and find a therapist or a coach online. Uh, you're, you're up to, you get up to about 25 sessions a year and it's free to you. And um, the, the appointments can be made online or on the app and they can be an in-person, online or on the phone. Uh, the second item is Livongo. They're our diabetes program um, partner, and then that is also free to members for them to enroll. And uh, with this program, that you get a connected glucose meter that gives you real-time checks, um, chats uh, live to encourage you and help you with any questions. And then if you um, actively participate every month, you'll get free diabetes supplies and uh, medications included. The third item is USC Premier Care. So if you're 
currently getting care or interested in getting care at CAC Medicine or with the USC care providers. Um, this is a free service they offer. It's like a concierge service to you. They can help with scheduling appointments, making sure you're on track with your screenings. Um, if you're hospitalized, they'll help with care transitions. And then they also have additional clinical programs to address issues like hypertension and diabetes. And then the last uh, item I want to highlight for the PPO and EPO members is live health online. Um, I know a lot of us don't want to leave our homes to see doctors nowadays, so this is a telehealth um, option to you. You can see primary care providers there as well as behavioral health providers. Um, the standard copay for office visits would apply here. And then I'm going to scroll to the right uh, column for Anthem HMO members. Um, they have a new program or partnership with MyStream. It's a free online and mobile program through um, to help you with emotional health and well-being. You can also find some therapists there. And, and then we have a flyer online um, that you can check out under the Anthem HMO plan documents that kind of walks you through step-by-step -step of how to download that. Other programs that are available for Anthem HMO members are condition care. Um, that is more if you have ongoing health conditions, um, they do have a care management and nurse team that can assist you further. Um, if you're planning to get pregnant or you know, doing some future mom planning, they also have a program for moms to help you track um, in your pregnancy, make sure you're um, doing all the healthy steps to keep your baby safe. They check on your emotional health as well. And then there's a 24-7 nurse care hotline as well if you have any questions related to your care, ongoing care or insurance questions. And then the last portion is for Kaiser HMO members. Uh, they sent me a plethora of resources to you, um, lots of flyers online, so I encourage you to check out the plan documents under Kaiser. Um, they have a whole program dedicated to mental health, um, some classes and coaching, so whatever your health um, goals are whether you want to quit tobacco, losing some weight, um, stress, um, you can access a coach, sign up for a class, or find a dedicated online program. And then they've also added some self-care apps um, free to you as a member. Um, one of them is Calm app, and it's a meditation app. So you know that's usually not free um, when you go and sign up on your own, so that's a benefit. And then they also, like Anthem, have the My Strength app um, you can download to find um, a mental and wellness um, therapist to assist you there. Um, so again, we do have, this is quite a bit of information. Um, I included some links. I know they're going to share this presentation after. And then I encourage you to just um, go on our employee website to find um, fact sheets and flyers for each of these in much more detail. Um, thank you so much. And now I'm just going to turn it back over to Julie for some time for open Q&A. Great. Thank you, Alice. And thank you, everybody. So we have about six minutes for Q&A. And before I open the line to do so, I just want to let everyone know that we will be sending a feedback survey to all of you afterwards. And we would appreciate any feedback you have for us on this webinar, ways to improve and topics for future suggestions, or if you would like to have this presentation brought to your departments or units, our team is happy to do so. And we can always repeat this presentation just for your unique team or unit. So with that, I'm gonna stop sharing so we could see faces and ask the group if there's any questions anyone wants to ask the team of presenters. Feel free to unmute yourself and speak up since I can't see all 300 of you at once. Any questions from the group? Or Suzanne, are there anything in the chat that we can um, yes. answer out loud? Okay. Um, Julie, there, were, there was a general question. Will the slides be made available after? And um, yeah. Great. Um, I'm glad to hear there's interest for the slides. I will check in with all the presenters to make sure that it's okay for us to share the slides. And if so, then we will send it out along with the link to the survey. Okay. And there's a couple questions for Mike um, regarding rec sports. Are your trainers versed in helping those over the age of 65? Yes, definitely. We have uh, trainers that have experience with the senior population and trainers that uh, are experienced for modifications for 
pretty much any uh, health need. Okay, and um, next question. Um, could you tell us more about the phase reopening, such as making an appointment to use the pool? The, the appointments, once the facilities get open, pool I believe is gonna open sometime next week. Uh, you'll have two days in advance to uh, reserve a spot. Understand there will be limited availability uh, and you can go through the uh, USC Recreational Sports page and it'll direct you to where to make those reservations. Same way with the track and field and Brittingham uh, intramural field. Okay, the last question being um, uh, regarding the gym membership that a participant bought in 2020 to 2021, um, did they get a credit? For this year? The, um, the members had the option to either take a credit or to push back their membership to when we were restarting. All they need to do is, is email us at uh, recsports at usc.edu. Great. Thank you, Mike. And then I, I have one uh, question for Alice. Uh, does the wellness incentive work if we don't have insurance through USC? You can still participate in the wellness um, incentive. I mean, you can still use Vitality and get that, but unfortunately you wouldn't get the credit if you don't have um, a medical enrollment because the, the credit is deducted off your premiums for the, the health plan. But you're welcome to still get the numbers um, for your own knowledge and to share with your provider. Great, and here's a question for Lindsay. Barbe does barbecue, I'm assuming sauce, have high sugar. What do you think about different kinds of alternate sugars like monk sugar? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, all barbecue sauce brands are going to be different. You really have to check the label. A lot of them do have higher sugar. Um, I know there is a brand, um, Primal Kitchen is a really popular brand that does have low sugar barbecue sauce, or you can make your own barbecue sauce. You can control the amount of sugar you put in. Um, I'll be honest, I'm not a huge fan of all the sugar substitutes because the goal really is to, you know, try and eat less sweet foods and just by adding on all of these different sugar substitutes that aren't necessarily good for our microbiomes, um, our, our guts, um, you know, we're not lessening that uh, intake. Um, and I don't think they taste good either. Um, I, monk fruit, uh, monk sugar, I've heard is a little bit, tastier. Um, I'm not a fan of stevia, but folks who are in the same boat as me have said that monk fruit tastes a little bit better. Um, but overall, the goal really is to lessen the amount of sugar that you eat. Um, you know, regular sugar is okay, just in moderation in small amounts. Thank you. A question for Marissa. Do you suggest the under the desk hammock? I've been seeing so many footrests, but it's unclear which would be best. Yeah, so I already responded in the chat. So if it's redundant, forgive me. But um, I love the, the under desk hammock for an option for movement under the, under the desk. Uh, and it does allow you to change position. However, for a footrest, I really prefer something that's a little bit more stable in nature that perhaps provides the option for movement as well. So I like um, footrests that have a position where you can have it static and stable underneath your feet or perhaps have the option to flip it over and rock and roll um, so that you get both movement and stability uh, intermixed. Great, thank you. And time for one last question. Mike, this is for you. Just came in the chat. Who should we contact if we're, we're having tech issues making outdoor rec reservations like the track and field? I think the first one is just send us an email, rec, R-E-C dash S-P-O-R-T-S at usc.edu, and then we can forward it to the right person and help you out. Thank you. Well, we're at time, everybody. We're going to go through the chat later and make sure we address all the questions. We will be putting this recording up on the CWFL website, and we'll send you the link so you know where that is. Make sure you fill out the survey. We'll also send out our contact information if you need to get a hold of any of us. And with that, thank you so much for being part of this presentation. We are so happy to have all of you today and look forward to seeing you and meeting you in person as we return back to campus. So thank you. And I'll hang on along with some members of the team if anyone wants to stay on with us. But thank you.